Hello and welcome to our climate control greenhouse at the Biotechnology Research Institute, University, Malaysia, Sabah. And we are looking at the Kratky method for the purpose of our experiment. And I, as you can see, I have set up two plants, tomato plants, in order to test the hypothesis of aeration with regard to Kratky method. And this is a preliminary experiment, so we do not have replicates, but we plan to do so once we obtain the results from this particular experiment in order to validate the outcomes. Now let's look at this plant. So as you can see over here, this is a plant with no aeration. So we are using a blend of fertilizer and this is a 12 gallon bucket. So we have a 12 gallons of uh, water here and we have a specifically developed nutrient mix which has all the elements, the major and mi minor elements, micronutrients as well as calcium for growth. Now let's look at this plant in general. The leaves are basically curled as you can see there's a curling of the leaves and the, there's a lot of flowering, a significant amount of flowering after around 90 days. Okay, the flowering has taken place. Now let's look at the roots themselves. So. I'm going to lift up this lid here and you can view the roots. Okay, the roots have grown well. And in Kretke systems, the roots at the upper end basically are evolved or have basically differentiated into roots which can capture air. And the roots which are below are capturing nutrients from this mix. Okay, so the mixture is basically being absorbed by these plants. I have just stopped this up. Now with Kratky systems, when you top up the solution, please ensure that you maintain the EC, the electrical conductivity, as well as the pH of the nutrient solutions, or else your plants will be shocked by the sudden change in nutrition. Now, on the other side, we have a plant which is being aerated using a standard aerator. I have used an aquarium pump. And this one has more profuse growth of vegetation. There is also flowering in this case. There is a significant amount of flowering. Now, this is a preliminary experiment as I mentioned and we still have to look at the results in terms of the quantitative aspects such as fruit yield as well as the plant biomass. Now, let's look at what's happening below the surface. And with Kretke systems, the advantage is you can always lift up the lid and look below. Now there's a tube there and that has an air stone. The air stone is immersed in the solution and the root growth in this case is less profuse as compared to the other roots which were not aerated. Now this may be the reason for the more profuse growth in the vegetation. Now all things considered, in the case of the non-aerated plants, a significant amount of energy is utilized to ensure root growth in order to capture more nutrition and air from the medium. Whereas in the case of the aerated plant, the energy is directed towards vegetative growth. Now in terms of the biomass and in terms of the yield, it would be recommended that you use aeration which, is, which will utilize a small amount of energy, a small quantum of energy. This is basically a pump from an aquarium which is using about 5 watts of energy. So in terms of the economics, we have to outweigh the cost of the energy versus the output. Now this plant has also flowered and I may have to resort to artificial pollination as we are in a climate controlled greenhouse with artificial lighting and cooling and there is no insect here as this is a containment facility. Okay, we'll keep you updated about these results with these two tomato plants and we'll extend this experiment to include replicates. We will also be investigating the role of salinity on uh, yield and also the lycopene content of tomatoes. So stay with us as we update you and bring you these results. Thank you very much for watching and have a pleasant day ahead.